one more up, one more thing we like. Um, Julio looks back. He looks for real. He came off that that 14 inning scoreless streak. Did give up a run and then gave up the game tying two run homer in the third or whatever inning it was. I think it was in the third. Uh, and then you saw him get pissed and use it right. He locked in after that and he looked devastating. Possibly his best start of the year uh, yesterday. Yeah, I would say absolutely his best start of the year. He looks like the Julio Arias of old. He's locked in. I mean, he took in a 14-inning scoreless streak entering this game, and he was outstanding. Those seven innings allowed three runs, four hits, had a career-high 12 strikeouts, a season-high 22 whiffs, no walks. That, to me, was the <laughs> biggest key. And also, if they turn that double play... And Freddie makes a scooper. Kike makes a better throw. You don't get that home run by yeah. Trejo. So really made one bad pitch, and that was on the changeup. And that's what you need to look for when you watch Julio Urias in his starts because I feel more confident about his fastball command. He's avoiding the heart of the plate. You're seeing him work at the top of the zone, bottom of the zone, working all quadrants. But the changeup is where you've seen the improvement, <laughs> and that was a hanging changeup right there. Any other pitch, he probably survives that, right? Yeah. But on the changeup, he hangs it, he hits it out. He only had a whole one home run head against that one. It's a little fluky there. But last four starts for Julio, a 2.25 ERA, 27 punch outs, four walks, and 24 innings of work. He's allowed three or fewer runs in six of his last seven starts. Julio is cooking with gas right now. I'm telling <laughs> you, the Urias is focused and locked in. I love the demeanor, too. He's, puta yeah. madre. Can I yeah. say that? <gasps> uh, like, I mean, he's Whoa. yelling at himself. Say it one more time. He's yelling at himself, and he's showing that fire, that aggression. He yeah. looks like Julio Arias, and two, I was talking to Jose Moda, and he told, he told me, look at the legs. I mean, for yeah, him, he's in his legs that momentum more. going towards yeah. the plate, that's where you get the conviction. That's where you get the effectiveness on that changeup. And the fact that the balance is there, his mechanics have improved, and he's still a guy that still is one of the best starters. Clint, you don't go from being in your prime, 26 really years old, yeah. and if it's not for because of an injury, they're going to drop off. No, he's still having a lot of success because he's healthy once again. The sequencing is better. The mechanics are improved. I think the conditioning is better. And I also think he sees the light at the end of the tunnel. He sees the bag. He sees the postseason. And look, he's one of the best competitors in the sport. And I love that that fires back. I think he's right back to being a frontline starter for this team. Yeah, and, and uh, giving the Dodgers, again, a good problem to have. Because there was a bit there you did not – you didn't even maybe want him touching a ball in the postseason – um, with how he was throwing there leading up to the injury and then coming out of the injury, not looking too good. But now uh, it's, it's all coming together at the right time. And like we said last week, he still has time to go out there and earn his money. He's going to get paid. You know, maybe it's a little bit less than it might have been, but uh, the, the body of work will help him out. And you go out there and you win a, you win a World Series, you can go get money anywhere you want. Uh, Cody, what's going on in the stream, man? <laughs> <laughs> a few comments about Julio Arias before we get to the big surprise. <laughs> Anthony Keene, the Uri Ace, Maddie Man Five Do or Maddie Man Five Dodge, the dog in Julio is back. Ooh, Curbel, pork, 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 pork. Uh, <laughs> Seth Curbel, Julio struck out seven straight. Craig goes to verse seven strikeouts. Uh, in a row, Trevor Ellis with an interesting take here says, Julio is back only at Dodger Stadium on the road. Throw up emoji. Hey. No, I will say that. I want to see him string together some really That's good fair. consecutive starts against postseason level opponents. I definitely want to see that. But like I said, on the year, opponents rating 350 on that changeup. Over the last month, you're back down to under 200 at 192. You mentioned the strikeouts. That's when you know he's really dealing, when he's punching guys out. Yes, that was like a 4A, AAA team. I think the Rockies, yeah. I think the AAA, OKC Dodgers could have swept that team. But still, his confidence is gaining. And we all know that he was going to round in a form. This is Julio Urias we're talking about, okay? So I have the utmost confidence in the guy. The fastball velocity still isn't fantastic, but he's not a fastball reliant pitcher. No. He doesn't need that. For him, look, for him, pitching for him is like real estate's location, location, it's, location, it's right? And that's what's the most important thing. And, and change eye levels, change speeds. One thing uh, you mentioned, hold on, one thing real quick. You mentioned that the home, uh, you know, the home thing. Uh, what, why every single home start? Do they need the Los Dodgers jersey? Like, he likes them. Uh, it's, you know, they, I, I remember them talking about it earlier in the season. Um, it's, it wasn't like like his thing. They just ask him every time, like, are you okay if we wear it today? And he's like, yeah, whatever. I, I, it, it's, I forgot who said it. I think it was Lance Lynn who said it. I'm just saying you have to go back to 2022 to find an image of, of uh, <laughs> yeah, him the, wearing the home Dodgers in the home whites. Anyway, it's one thing to bitch about, but it's, it's stupid. It doesn't matter. Just keep winning. Cody, keep going. Uh, before we get into the blank chat, 
That's for Noah oh over there. Oh my! God. Um, what are we talking about? Uh, some people are talking about uh, about how Julio is going to be gone in free agency. Any thoughts on that? I would probably give it thirty-five to forty percent chance that he's back. I think all signs point to the Dodgers not loving giving starting pitchers contracts of six, seven, eight years. And when you look at his age, I've said on the show a few different times that really is the Bryce Harper, the Manny Machado of pitchers because he's entering free agency at such a such young a age, age yeah. and that's going to allow him to sign a long-term deal. He's represented by Scott Boris. And Clint, when you sign with Scott Boris, you do it for one reason and one reason only. That's to get that dinero. That's to get that that money. Yeah. Watch the Manziel doc over the weekend. The money Manziel, right? He's trying to get that bag, and he's going to go for the team that pays him the most money and gives him the most years. I think, as you mentioned earlier, there was a point this season where we were talking about his spot in the postseason rotation and his future with the team, and maybe he accepts a qualifying offer, a yeah. bet on yourself, <laughs> short-term deal. That ain't happening. Man. He's still going to get five, six, seven, eight years, and I think he's going to give himself a deal between 150 to $200 million, something in that range. But we're not looking at the Garrett Cole, the Strasburg levels contract, but he's still going to give himself a very nice bag. But like I said, we'll see what the Dodgers do with Shohei Otani. It's not a lock. A lot of teams out there are going to be pursuing him. We know that. The Giants, the Mariners, the, a lot of teams that are going to be big on him. It's not going to be the Mets anymore. We know that. Thank you, Max Scherzer. But I will say that uh, <laughs> if you don't get Shohei Otani, I like my chances a lot more. So I give it 35. Let's go 35.9% chance. How about you? What would you oh, give? I got to answer. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you don't, you don't have I, to. I'm going to say 50-50, to be honest. Ooh. Do you think it's a coin flip? If, if, okay. if anybody, you know, uh, um, if, any, if any Boris client could stay, it could be Julio. I think he he likes L.A. He likes the the team, the city, all that kind of BS. You know, we've seen how much you know Fernando means to him and all of that that, that came That's out from the point. last yeah. weekend. I yeah. think I think he understands kind of the um, uh, the duty to community. I guess we'll say, and he's you know he's. He's a homie. He's definitely one of the homies here in L.A., you know. I do think any time that you want to talk about future signings and long-term signings with the Dodgers, it goes beyond just the player. And the fact that he has those strong ties, the fact that he is the indelible image of the 2020 World Series, he held them and put them on his back throughout the entire postseason run. He was phenomenal. I think there's that, too. And I think, look... It's a little bit overblown when it comes to Scott Boris about his client and him just going to his client saying, I'm going to basically choose a team for you that gives you the most money. Look at how Jose Altuve did. I mean, he wanted to be in Houston. They found yeah. a way to get a deal done. So if there is a mutual interest there and you can come to terms on some contract that the Dodgers feel good about, that Julio feels good about, I think it makes sense. But I also think, too, this Dodgers pipeline of pitching is so strong. That's a good point. And they develop guys so well that, But look, none of those guys are ready to be an ace. I agree with you. I mean, a lot of potential there. I think star-wise, not a lot of superstar potential there. I think finding a top 15 to 20 pitcher like we know in this league is not easy to do. They do not grow on trees. I will be very sad when Julio Arias leaves if he does to see him in another team's uniform. It will be sad, but he's got to do what's best for him and his career and his family, right? He's already won a World Series with this team. has accomplished so much. So, yeah, we'll see how this, this season plays out. I think... You guys, that's going to be one of the big storylines I think you guys need to follow very closely because the better he pitches, the more money he's going to earn mm -hmm. and the more money the Dodgers will have to pay him. So, yeah, I would say 35% chance, but I think that you're not wrong in saying 50% chance when you consider the other factors as well. I just know at the end of the day, the Dodgers are like kind of like F your feelings, kind of like, yeah, we're, we're such that, a smart organization. We've seen that Seager, a lot more right? yeah. in the, in the, uh, in over the last, well, really over the last year. Yeah. You let Justin Turner walk. That says something about uh, what you think about the future of this organization. One last note on that. Don't sleep on the Yankees in the offseason. What you got? <laughs>